Hi, this is the Sacred Cow Tipper, and uh, I've been um, emailing a lot of atheists, agnostics, evolutionists, and such uh, over the last uh, two weeks on YouTube, and some of them have been really polite. We've been having some good discussions, you know, been getting bombarded by a ton of different questions. Uh, they have a, a certain doubts and things like that, and well, I just want to put everything in a nutshell. Christianity involves faith. Okay, you believe the Bible story, you come to the conclusion uh, that you must repent and believe upon Christ's sacrifice. You must also take into account that God gave Adam dominion over the earth. And Adam uh, gave that dominion over to Satan when he fell into sin. Now, a lot of the atheists uh, blame God and say God is immoral because uh, we inherited Adam's sin. Well, as a mother or father, uh, when you give birth to a child, what do they inherit? They inherit your character traits in a lot of ways. They inherit uh, the way you look and uh, different things like that. Well, why would we think any differently about, you know, why would we think any differently about, you know, inheriting uh, something in a spiritual sense? Okay. So, the Bible story goes that Adam sinned against God. God created man. He wanted to fellowship with man. But he wanted man to fellowship with him and to love him also. Uh, otherwise, he would have just created robots that would have automatically worshipped him. So, anyhow, uh, he gives Adam and Eve a little test to see if they'll uh, follow him and love him back by their own choice. Satan comes along and tells them, oh, you can be just like God. Now here, man decides he wants to usurp authority over the dominion God gave him. People would say, well, God's unloving. Okay, God creates you, gives you the breath of life, sunshine, all the good things on earth. And then you turn around and you want to usurp authority over him. He, get, he gives you dominion over the entire earth and over all of God's creation. And you turn around and you listen to the enemy, to Satan. In other words, uh, it was man that stuck his middle finger up at God. He wanted God's throne. So he listened to the enemy, Satan, the fallen angel, and turns around and then wants to blame God for his fall. Okay, well, man blew it. Man was given dominion. God loved him so much, he gave him dominion over the entire planet and over everything on the planet. And man turns around, sticks his middle finger up at God. And uh, many of the atheists will say that God is immoral for judging man and for pronouncing a curse on the earth. You know, they talk about healing. We've discussed healing. That I said God still heals people today. And they got every excuse in the book uh, when it comes to that. I, I tell them I was healed of arthritis after prior. That, that's not a good enough answer for them. It has to be done under scientific scrutiny. Okay, so now I have to, uh, I go to the altar to get prayed for. What are we supposed to do? Call up a bunch of scientists who may or may not show up before I get prayed for or before anybody gets prayed for? You know, there's many people out there that have x-rays as fact that they've been healed. I'm sure they would find some excuse for that also. Well, how do we know these x-rays are yours or if you're not doctoring this up or photoshopping that? Anyhow, there's just so many questions they ask, you know, and I understand, I'm a very analytical, some people say anal retentive kind of person myself, but I realize faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Some things you can't explain, and that's just how it is. Okay. But anyhow, God gave Adam dominion over the whole earth. He forfeited it over to Satan. Satan became the prince of the power of the air. 
Okay, and that's that's how it is. Until God's final judgments take place, until he puts everything back into place, that's how it is. I'm sure many won't accept that, but that's part of being a Christian. Uh, you accept those things you can't fully understand at this point. Um, almost every question somebody could ask, there is a logical, reasonable answer for, but it comes down to, are you willing to receive it or not? Okay, so uh, that's my, uh, what do you want to call it, my thought for the day. I love the atheist, I love the agnostic, the evolutionist. Um, I, th I think it's very hard for them to come to God because they want, they want every single question of theirs to be answered. And that in itself is not logical. Especially if you're going to put a straw man argument up as to how they want it answered. Okay, you know, I can't answer every single, I'm a, I'm a big time creationist, I'm a big time apologetics kind of a person, but nobody in the world is going to answer every single question out there. Let's say I have half of the entire universe's knowledge, all the mathematics, science, um, things that can't be explained, let's say I could explain 50% of it. Now we know any the smartest person in the world probably can't explain one one millionth of everything out there. Let's say I have 50% of all knowledge. Okay, and I just say, well, because I have so much knowledge, God doesn't exist because I can't prove God. Although there are some ways to prove God if you're willing to accept uh, the reasoning and the logic behind it. But let's say, I say, well, I have 50% of all knowledge, therefore I can't see God in anything, therefore God doesn't exist. But there's a logical answer to that. What if God exists in the other 50%? Okay, now back to what I said a little bit ago that the smartest person in the world probably has less than one millionth of all the knowledge in the universe. So to have 50% and God could be on that other 50% and uh, the fact that many wicked, wicked men, millions and millions of wicked men throughout the last two millennia have had their hearts changed and they've become new people and that is a work of the Holy Spirit. I think that is answer enough to a lot of questions. But then again, you can't put it under scientific scrutiny. Okay, this person believed what you said and they had a fear, so therefore they started living a certain way. You know, you can come up, come up with an excuse all the time but the fact of the matter is millions of people's lives have been changed and have been changed once they came to a repentant place in their heart, realized who they were, realized who God was, they repented of their sins, and they turned to God, and they believed upon Christ's sacrifice. All of a sudden, you got a changed heart because the Holy Spirit comes in there and regenerates that person's heart takes that heart of stone out, puts in a heart of flesh, a soft heart, and that's what the Bible teaches, and it's happens, happened millions of times uh, over the last 2,000 years. Whether you accept it or not, that's up to you. But that's a fact. That's a fact in millions of people's lives, whether you accept it or not. Can't help you. If you believe millions and millions of people are liars, can't help you. All right, that's it uh, for the Sacred Cow Tipper. That's my thought for the day. I uh, hope you guys have a good night.